Hey, y'all, how are you doing today? We are going to watch Charlie Adelson uh, getting hammered by... <laughs> I don't know. Hammered sounds weird. Okay. <laughs> the title says State Hammers Charlie Adelson in Hitman Conspiracy, but when I say Charlie Adelson getting hammered by Georgia Kappelman, it sounds weird. <laughs> but uh, we're going to We're gonna watch... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so mature. We're going to watch the cross-examination of uh, Charlie Adelson. His trial happened back in like November 2023. I wanted to cover it live, but I had COVID during this time, so I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to play video games. Um, we're not going to cover it live. Being all sneezy and coffee and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, let's watch the cross-examination. I haven't seen it yet. I heard he gets destroyed. I've seen the headlines and all that, but I actually have not seen the entirety of it. I don't know if I've even seen clips of it. We watch Wendy Adelson's cross well actually wendy edelson was a witness for the state so technically it was a direct examination but it felt like a cross examination because there's a lot of heat going on you know there's a lot of back and forth battles hi taxi how are you doing today hello did my discord notification work is it working is it good i hope it's good yeah we are done with the hannah Reed gutierrez trial did the judge ever say when she was going to do sentencing i know that her attorney was trying to figure out dates maybe for I think he said like June and the judge was like, mm, can you do sooner than that? So maybe it was April. Maybe it was May. I don't know. Hopefully sooner. Hi, Dino. How are you doing today? How's it going? Y'all the discord work. Yay. Yeah. Don't forget to have your discord notification on. If you guys are not in discord, join the discord. The link is down below. Hi, toy box. How are you doing today? Hi, Kurt. I was going to start off with the, I don't know. I was like, should I start with this one? There was an interrogation that I want to watch, but I was like, you know what? Let's just go straight to Charlie, okay? We are already coming off of another trial. Let's just get into another trial. Just a little, a little quick one. So I think we're going to start with this one. So I was trying to get my thumbnails in. And um, this one I want to watch at some point. I don't know who that is, but apparently she's a friend of both uh, Dan Markell and this chica over here, Miss Wendy Adelson. Hi, Morden. How are you doing today? Vivi. Hello, hello. Hi, Kayla. Hope you guys are doing well. And I don't know. One in chat, if you've already seen Charlie Adelson's trial in its entirety. Two in chat, if you haven't seen it yet. Three, if you're like, you watch bits and pieces of it. For me, I'm a three. I watch bits and pieces of it. I want to watch, um, after we're done with Charlie Adelson, I think at some point I do want to watch um, Jeff. Jeff Lacoste. He testifies. One, one. I forgot what my options were. What was it again? Was one didn't watch it or did watch it? <laughs> I'm sorry, this always happens. Every time I do a poll, I'm like, wait, what was one again? What was two? I know I'm a three. That's all I know. <laughs> I, don't, I forgot what ones and twos were. <laughs> okay, some of you guys are threes. I know what threes are. Was one watched it or not watched it? <laughs> okay, one watched all of it. This always happens. Thanks, Kayla. You're the best. <laughs> Listen, guys, it's, um, is it even Monday? It's not Monday. Oh, it's Wednesday. Oh my God. Okay, so listen. I went to the doctors at like 7 a.m. I woke up super early. Daylight savings in the United States. It's like dark as heck at 7 a.m. Okay, it was weird waking up this morning. I was like, where the hell am I? Is it the eclipse or something like that? But I went to the doctors, got my blood drawn, and now I'm here. <laughs> I don't even drink caffeine, okay? I don't even drink caffeine. Although... My blood test results did say that my cholesterol levels aren't bad, but they're a little bit high or they're considered high. So I got to watch, I guess I got to watch out on the fast food stuff. I mean, I don't even like fast foods. It's more like Dennis. He loves fast foods. He loves French fries. He loves McDonald's and like, got to watch your cholesterol levels. But anyways, I hope you guys are doing well. And I think we have some dates uh, popping up, by the way. Um, oh man, what was some dates? Oh, Scott Peterson, you guys are familiar with the Scott Peterson stuff. Um, his shit happened a long time ago. I think I was like still in like school when it was happening. But apparently the Innocence Project is picking up his his case. And uh, he's got some trial dates or not some trial dates, but he got some court dates uh, coming up soon, which I think will be interesting. I don't know. I remember watching like a true crime doc about it a long, 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 long time ago. And I was like, yeah, that guy for sure is guilty. Even though it was all circumstantial evidence, I was like, nah, he's guilty. But I don't know. We'll see what kind of stuff they uncover. 90 days without coffee. Yay. How are you feeling, Morden? Did you make the switch to... I know a lot of people are doing like the mushroom... I don't even know what it is. Is it like a mushroom tea or something? It's like a mushroom thing that people are getting off coffee and they're trying this mushroom thing. Reishi mushrooms. I do have... Uh, I used to have like mushroom drinks, but there is this one that I really liked and they discontinued it. And any of the mushroom stuff that I bought afterwards, they, they just taste like shit. <laughs> it's 
so i don't know i mean if there's anything cool out there i definitely uh, love jerky i don't know if it's reishi mushroom but it was um adaptogens is that mushroom stuff i don't know but yeah um there used to be like this one brand that made this like really good mushroom thing and everything afterwards i'm like nah Oh, you're doing hot chocolate? Yeah, it's hot chocolate. It's so good. Oh, hot chocolate is the best. The best. All right, y'all. So, Charlie Adelson is here. Now, Charlie Adelson has already been convicted, has already been sentenced. Um, of course, he's probably going to appeal. His mama, Donna Adelson, has already been arrested. Her trial date is set for, was it beginning of fall, I think? I think it was beginning of fall. But he is on here because his sister was in a very contentious divorce with a man named Dan Markell. And somehow, magically, he just got killed by two hitmen. Now, they're trying to say that it wasn't tied to this rich family all the way down in Miami. The hitmen, they ha- that's, that should happen in Tallahassee. So they're just trying to say, they're like, oh, you know, we weren't involved in it. We're just, you know, we're just some good old folks in Miami. You know, we're prestigious people. We were white, affluent. We got lots of money. We were dentists, and I think they're just all dentists, right? I think um, the older son is a doctor, but he's already kind of like split from the family. But uh, now they're kind of changing the story a little bit. And Charlie's going up there and he's trying to say that like, well, you know, they knew I had a lot of cash. I was dating this girl named, what was her name again? Katie, (laughs) Katie with the boobies. I was dating this girl named Katie and she knew I had a lot of cash on me. So they must have killed this guy in order to blackmail me and say they're like, hey, I killed this guy. I'm going to say that you hired me to do it. If you don't give me money, I'm going to say all this to the cops, which doesn't make sense. It's like, why would you kill someone in order to rob someone? Just fucking rob someone outright. Like, it makes no sense. So he was trying to say they're like, oh, I, I guess I'm being blackmailed. I guess something blackmailed. And this happened about nine, ten years after the death of Dan Markell. So I haven't seen this cross-examination yet. I can't wait for Georgia Kaplan, who is the state prosecutor. Can't wait for her to go in into this guy. Okay, because the Adelson family, they are... You seem like pieces of shits, okay? Pieces of shits. Now, um, they haven't gone after Wendy yet. Wendy was a witness in this case. Wendy's his sister. Donna's going down. That's his mama. Harvey Adelson is the father. We don't really know what the involvement is, but I mean, I have, a, I have an inkling that he probably knew, okay? Because there's been some stuff that's been mentioned about him. And uh, they went after the two hitmen, and they went after Katie, who was the in-between of the hitman and the Adelson family. Oh, hi, Miss Mantas. How are you doing today? How's it going? Also, um, I've been posting stuff on TikTok, but then I found out some news that, I don't know, maybe TikTok is going to be banned in the United States, which I don't really understand how they can do that, but... I don't know. We'll see what happens to the TikTok stuff. Because then I'm like, okay, well, then I don't have to work on my TikTok stuff if it's going to be banned anyways. But I don't know. It just, feel, it just feels weird to ban like a whole ass social media in America. But anyways, that's just random news. Hi. Oh, you've got the best name ever, Stevie. Hi, everyone. Like the stream. Hi, Stevie. How are you doing today? Hello. Back when Charlie Adelson was doing a smug, elite face. Yo, I've seen the screenshots of his face uh, during trial. Yes, very, very smug. He was like laughing. He was there confident. I don't know. I think he was trying to be likable to the jury. But we all saw his face during sentencing. That that entire thing just dropped, okay? We saw the true Charlie Adelson when he was, uh, or when the verdict came out, sorry. When the verdict came out and the sentencing as well. I was having a nice dream and my dog woke me up. Oh, no. Have you guys ever woken up from a nice dream and then try to get back to it? Sometimes it works. What you have to do is like you have to go to back to sleep right away, like almost immediately. And you have to think about the dream over and over and over again. And sometimes you'll get right back where you started, which is pretty cool. But sometimes, you know, you don't. And that sucks. But yeah. Oh, I hope your dog is doing okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's get into this cross-examination. Also, I'll keep an eye out when Hannah reads... Um, sentencing is gonna happen i i actually wonder you know i feel like because the judge took her away so like they they they, they took her in custody like asap i wonder if the judge is gonna go harsh on her um she was facing what like 18 months but i heard that she can get as little as probation that's what i heard you can apparently get back to the dream when you meditate uh, right after waking up. What I do is I wake up and I'm like, I try to go back to sleep like right away. I just go back to sleep and keep thinking about it. Think about it. I don't know if that's considered meditation or not, but I just try to think about it. And then hopefully I'll hop back in. My favorite dreams are always like the fantasy dreams and the like romance story dreams. I don't know. It's really weird. Sometimes when I dream, the stuff that's happening, it's not me. It's like me watching a movie. I don't know. It's like so cool. But anyways, I can talk about dream stuff all day, every day. <laughs> 
Hi, Rhiannon. Hi, guys. I didn't get the notification. Boo, YouTube. Uh, well, join the Discord. I feel like Discord never fails when it comes to notifications. Join the Discord. Um, yeah. Notifications goes out on Discord first. Although, sh I don't know. Do people post in their community tab? They're like, hey, I'm live right now. I feel like I don't really see streamers doing that. I don't know if that's a thing. All right, here's the Discord. All right, y'all. So people who are probably watching the VOD right now, it's like, Corgi, let's just get into it. Let's just watch Charlie. It doesn't get destroyed or get hammered. <laughs> Sorry. On <laughs> cross-examination. Oh, boy. All right, y'all. I might have to boost the audio, but I think for the most part, should be okay. Oh, hell no. It is not. <laughs> what is up with this audio? Wait, maybe she's so far away from the... Is it doctor? It is, yes. All right. No, no, the audio. What is going on with this audio? I don't understand why when they... I guess here's what happens. When they stream the shit, they just upload it directly. I wish they would stream it and then they would like post edit it by boosting the audios and then post it on YouTube. You know? Like, is it my audio? Like, is it me? Like, I don't think so. I feel like this audio is just really low. Hello on Mendads. Oh, you're both. Hello. You're on there as well. Welcome, welcome. How you doing today? Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I usually prefer to watch my streamers on YouTube because the Twitch ads are kind of like... <sighs> Although, my stream, I made it so the Twitch ads, only like 30 second ads pop up every hour. So it's not too bad. But sometimes when I'm watching people on Twitch, they have like six ads every 15 minutes. And I'm just like, oh God, I hate this. <laughs> I hate this so much. Doctor, have you ever heard the saying that the simplest ex Okay, we're here. Okay, I think the audio is good. And I've heard this intro before. I love that she starts with it. I had no idea she started with this. Mr. Adelson, is it doctor? It is, yes. All right, doctor. Doctor. Have you ever heard the saying that the simplest explanation is always the most likely? Have you heard I've, that? I've heard that theory before, yeah. Not your contrived bullshit. Was your explanation to the jury over the last little over a day the simplest explanation? It was the truth. Do you... I mean, you have a thorough explanation. Would you agree with that? I told you what happened. Do you agree that the only problem with having an explanation for everything is that there's just so many explanations? There's no explanation. I explained what happened. I want to go through some of that. You <laughs> yes, claim that please. you were extorted on July 18th, 2014 by mm -hmm. Catherine Magdano and also in the background, some Latin kings, probably Garcia and Rivera, right? Is that accurate? No, I wasn't extorted by Catherine Magdano. You weren't? Not, okay, not, that's not what I believed in 2014. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I understood you to say you believe that today. Today I do, yes. All right, so who extorted you? I believe that it was Catherine Magdano's friend that she ran her mouth to. Okay. And at that's the, at 2014. The, Right, but as but you sit Katie. here today, you think it's Magbano, Garcia, and Rivera. Is that mm -hmm. accurate? No, that's not accurate. Okay. Who extorted you? As I sit here today, I believe that it was Catherine Magbano, and I believe Sigfredo Garcia, but I don't know for sure. I, I was never there when she was ever talking to him, so I don't know if he was in on it with her or not. All right. This is not true, At Charlie. At the time, though, you did not think she was guilty. You got that right. The time of the extortion. In 2014? Yes. Correct. Okay. Wait, so did she completely, sorry, Katie McBanwa, did she completely turn on Charlie? I know Katie testified in Charlie's trial. Maybe she was promised like a reduced sentence if she testified possibly. Ex and then so exactly when you found out would be, I think you said her trial. That I suspected that she was not telling me the truth and she was a part of it was in 2019. At her trial? Yes. All right. And so she was arrested in 2016, right? Yes. All right. So for three years, she was in the Leon County Jail awaiting trial. Yes. She was there. And I you believe like she was innocent. Yes. And you had this whole explanation to assist with exonerating her, right? I have the truth of what happened. Yes. But you didn't offer the truth of what happened, did you? Nobody came came to me. I thought the truth would come out. Does I, someone have to come to you? I was told not. Oh, true, because Katie had her trial, and Georgia was like, wait a second, then why didn't you try to exonerate her by helping her out? <laughs> Georgia! Not to talk to Katie and not to talk to anybody about this case by counsel. Okay. So you... Strike that. We need to have, like, a lawyer tier list, okay? You know how they do, like, those, like, tier rankings and stuff? We got to have Georgia Kappelman on there. We got to have Miss 
Oh, uh, what was her name again? Carrie, 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 Carrie. What was her last name again? Morrissey, Carrie Morrissey from the Rust trial. Um, we'll put Juan Martinez on there, even though Juan Martinez is in a whole shit show of a mess after the whole Jody Arias trial. Who else was on there? Who else should we like raid on there? I guess we'll put Gwyneth Paltrow's lawyer on there. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh, gotta put all the Depp and the uh, the herd attorneys on there. <laughs> hey, Nikki, how are you doing today? <laughs> I know. How could I forget about Elaine? On day one, which is July 18, 24. Oh, Jennifer Crumbly's lawyer. Yes. The prosecutor from Tisha's trial. The prosecutor. <sighs> I, I, you know what? I don't remember the prosecutor from her trial. Yeah, I feel like I, maybe if I see their face, maybe? 14. She is the only one that physically, which is July 18, 2014. She is the only one that physically contacted you to conduct this extortion. Am I correct in that? Yes, you are. So you never actually had any contact with any Latin king? No. No phone calls? No phone calls. No texts. No. No letters. Well, in 2016, from you're talking about 14, right? I'm talking about the first layer of the extortion. Did you have any contact with the thugs that were getting your money for two years? No. Did anybody put a gun to your head? I was told that I would be killed in 48 hours if I didn't pay up. I heard you say that, but yeah. my question is, did <laughs> anyone put a gun to your head? Did you ask me, did anyone pull a gun on me? That's what is I that asked your question? You. No, yeah. no, nobody pulled the firearm on me. All right, so when Catherine Madbano came to you on July 18th and said, open the safe and give me all your money, she was not armed. Oh, no! Because, like, why would Charlie just give her the money, right? Oh, no! It's falling apart so much. If Charlie was confronted by Katie, plus the two thugs, then, like, I could be like, okay, you know. But, like, Charlie's, like, saying, like, oh, I never met them. It's like, okay, so you weren't confronted by the two thugs. And Katie, did she pull a firearm on you? No. Why'd you give her the fucking money, then? You're going to be killed in 48 hours. I feel like he would just run to the cops. Oh, no. She was not carrying a gun that day, and no. Were you armed at that time? Did you have a weapon in your home? I had weapons in my safe, yes. Dude, Charlie. Were, the, were you led to believe or told that the bad guys are outside, right outside your apartment or your residence? No, but I was led to believe what they did to Dan they were going to do to me. I heard you say that, but my question is, did she say, like, the car is running, I'm going to take the money out there to him right now? No, she never told me that they were in, waiting for me outside my house. In fact, she stayed the night with you, didn't she? Oh, no. Yes, she did. And didn't exit your house with your $138,000 until the next day, right? Correct. <clears throat> and the money, the $138,000, was that stapled into $1,000 increments? Each packet was $1,000, and they were, had a staple in it. And stapling money's... Also, why would his mom wash the money and give it to Katie... If they were extorting, like, why wash the money then? Wouldn't you want your fingerprints to be all over it? That way, after you were extorted, you can call the cops and be like, hey, these bitches took my money. My fingerprints are all over it to prove that's my money or something. You know, something like that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dude, this is just. Oh, God, we're just five minutes in. I'm sorry. We're just five minutes in. Like, Charlie, your whole story is just falling apart over here. A little unusual. Would you agree with that? For me, it wasn't unusual. That's what I did. Thanks, Moondog. Moondog, thank you so much for the tier one set for 21 months on Twitch. Dude, thank you so much for your support. Almost two years. I appreciate it. Hope you had a good weekend. The, yeah, the Jody Ayers prosecutor, um, uh, Juan Martinez, he was very theatrical. <laughs> Each packet was $1,000 and they were, had a staple in it. And stapling money's a little unusual. Would you agree with that? For me, it wasn't unusual. That's what I did. Right, but... Nobody else does it. That's why I'm suggesting it's unusual. I've, I've never questioned people into how they keep their money, whether they keep it in a staple or a paperclip or an envelope. I just know what I do. Would you agree, doctor, that it's a compelling piece of evidence that the killers were paid and stapled money and came up with that information in this case? It's, it's not compelling. The, the people who extorted me and got my money got it from my house, and it was stapled in my house. They had to have gotten it from you, right? Because it was stapled. If they got it from Katie, they got it from me. So it had to be some kind of I paid... But I did it under duress, based on that piece of evidence, right? That had to be built into your defense. I was extorted, and I paid. Oh, I see Ruth back here, too. That's Dan Markell's mom. Hold on. All right, so K Katie comes in, and she... There's Ruth right there. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Ghost. How are you doing today? How's it going? She's in a panic, and she tells you what's happened. And I'm, I, need, I need all the money in your safe right now. Do you suspect that maybe she's working with the police at that point? 
Maybe she's trying to set you up? No, she, she didn't say I, I need all the money in your safe. That's not what she said. Did she take all the money in your safe? I, I cleaned out all the money in my safe and handed it to her. Right. Why did you do that? Because I was being extorted for a third of a million dollars. But why didn't you... The bump was only $5,000, and you immediately became suspicious and questioning and had all these conversations and deliberations. True! The $5,000 bump! It's not like he paid that immediately. Oh, no! It's about what to do about it for days. When Katie comes to you, you just open the safe and give her the money, right? I, that's what I did, and there's a big difference between the two. How? Okay, well, the way that it was done to you, is that the way it's done? You, you have to be more specific. Please. Well, on the wire, you say repeatedly, that's not the way it's done. You knew that the undercover agent was law enforcement, or at least strongly suspected, because that's not the way it's done. And my question to you is, since you're an expert on extortion, because you've been extorted before, and that's how you knew that's not the way it's done, is this the way it's done? Do extortionists send a girlfriend of their victim to collect their extortion money? Is that the way it's done, doctor? I'm telling you what happened to me, and I was told that if I didn't pay in 48 hours, I would be killed. The person that came and extorted my mom it was not the same approach as what happened to me. Is that the only way? That's the only way it's done? They send the girlfriend? It's the only time I've ever been extorted like that. I mean, if anything, the person that approaches mom probably was more scarier in terms of they're like bigger than her. She looked like she was like a tiny little thing. Um, he was bigger. He was a male, you know, and then they were hesitant about paying the 5K. But when it came to like Katie coming along, it's like, okay, here, take all my money in my safe. Okay. <laughs> and did you hear any of the negotiate? So they come in and they say, strike. They come in and they say, we need a third of a million dollars. You need to pay a third of a million dollars. You need to pay a third of a million dollars. Why not a million dollars? Exactly. Because when I had told to Katie that the million dollar offer for Dan Markell, I said I was going to pay a third of a million. And I, when she asked me, do you have that much money? And I said, yeah, I could pay it in cash. So she took it as I had cash and she knew I had a ton of cash in my safe. So she thought I had the cash. I didn't have all that cash. So that's where I'm assuming they got the third of a million dollars from. But the, the offer that she bragged about was a million dollar offer isn't that right that she ran her mouth about no no casey katie was like i don't want a million dollars i only want a third of the million i don't need a million dollars it was never there when she spoke to her friend okay was it a million dollar offer the offer was that a million dollars was going to be paid and i was going to pay a third of a million and weren't you going to cover wendy's third as well no not at all i was going to cover my third didn't your lawyer say an opening statement that you were going to cover the whole thing or wendy's third no i, I was sitting here I, I heard what he said charlie was going to pay a third of a million dollars all right and so the offer was a million dollar offer and that's what you told katie along with the fact that you were going to cover the third i was telling her that i was going to pay a third of a million dollars yeah and then one day my sister was able to she was going to pay me back and then you didn't have the amount of money that was being demanded at the time right no i, I only had what i had all right and at that point the blackmailer Catherine mcbanawa negotiates some type of layaway plan for you to complete the extortion with okay. the, the latin kings okay Katie wasn't the blackmailer, and Katie wasn't the one who was extorting me. Didn't you just tell this jury that Katie was the blackmailer? You realized he it did. in 2019. I had thought that when you were just talking, you were talking about 2014. You were talking about that night, okay. so yeah, that's night happened in 2014. Okay. <laughs> we all know now, because you have revealed the puzzle piece, she's a blackmailer. Can we agree on that? I believe sitting here in 2023 yes. that she was in on the extortion for sure. Yes. So is it okay if I refer to her as a blackmailer? I think there's a difference between blackmail and extortion, but yeah, okay. it's sitting here today we can. Sure. We'll, ex we'll refer to her as an extortionist. So this, this woman, the extortionist, is going to do you a solid by negotiating with the Latin Kings for you to get on a payment plan for the extortion. Isn't that what happened? What you're doing is you're taking what we know in 2003 and trying to say this is what I knew in 2014. There's Did she put you on a payment plan? Yes. Yeah, because they had to pretend that they hired Katie as like the cleanup lady or some shit. Donna was writing checks out to her like every month or something like that. But like only to Katie, not the rest of the dudes. She's, she said, because I didn't have the money, she said, ask me if I could pay $3,000 a month in 2014. And I said, yes, I can. Did you hear any of the conversation where she was making these negotiations on your behalf. No, when she said, I'm gonna go check with my friend and if that's okay with him, she took her purse, took her keys, took her cell phone, she walked out of my front door, closed the door behind her, and I sat in my living room and she came back about five minutes later. 
Why didn't you call the cops? You didn't want to talk to the guy yourself? No, I didn't even think of that. I mean, but she went outside to call him. All right, and then the two of you took a Xanax and went to sleep. <laughs> well, I, I took a Xanax. I don't know if she took one out of the bottle, but I, I definitely did. And the next morning, she left with your money, right? She left about 8.30 the next morning. That's July 19th, 2014? Correct. Let's talk about what you did that day. You did not report this to the police because you were in fear, correct? Absolutely. And you didn't report this to Wendy, even though, according to you, her life was in danger too, correct? Potentially, but I, I planned on paying the extortion every month. All right. And, but you did go to the gym that morning, right? I, sure. Right. And then also, wouldn't you hire... Okay, so listen to this. Donna Adelson, afterwards, it was like, I think at Dan's um, memorial service, it was two days after the murder, she hired bodyguards to be there. I feel like if you had these extortionists coming after you, wouldn't you be looking over your shoulder? Wouldn't you want to hire bodyguards or someone to, you know what I mean? Like, if you're too scared to go to the cops, then, like, hire some bodyguards to make sure that they ain't going to kill you or something like that. Oh, Lord. Show that text, please. Did you, were you able to go to the gym? The I, next I absolutely didn't leave the house. I, I worked it out at No Southeastern Gym. You can check the gym records. I was never there. Okay. Did you say you were going to the gym? I said I was, yeah. But you didn't actually go? No, I didn't leave the house. I don't know. I watch a lot of real, or I used to watch a lot of reality TV shows. I feel like Xanax is like it's a common theme in reality TV shows. <laughs> All right. So, would you agree, Doctor? And we'll refresh your memory with them if we can. That the text messages that were exchanged between yourself and Catherine McVanwell on the morning after this exchange of money were inconsistent with your extortion. Do we have the text thread? They were inconsistent with how I was feeling. They don't appear to look like you just gave her $138,000 under duress, do they? She told me to, the last thing she said to me before she left the house is, can we just pretend like this never even happened? So when I sent her that message, I was trying to show her like, I'm trying to block, I'm forget, trying to forget all about it. Yeah, you were just demonstrating to her that you would agree to pretend nothing happened, right? Absolutely, that's what she asked me to do and that's what I tried to do. So the text messages aren't what they appear to be. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to the pool. I'm going to the beach. I'm going yes, we have text messages. Oh, this is the best thing ever. There was a man who was, there was a man um, who was convicted recently of murdering his ex-girlfriend's fiance. And he tried to say that it was because he was like autistic, has an OCD. He was like really obsessed with her. He was trying to blame his like, um, his like disease, I guess, and disorders. But the state was like, no, 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 this is like completely premeditated because they had his like Google search history. It was like, how to shoot a gun? Can you hire a hitman? Um, what was the other thing? Oh, fuck. It was like stupid Googles. Oh, like how do police find, um, how does police find like, you know, Google search histories or something like that? It was just like really dumb shit like that. I think apparently maybe it was that day he found out that his ex-girlfriend was getting engaged. And so he was like completely unhinged and went over to the, um, the um the ex's fiance's place and like shot him oh my god people they googled the dumbest things ever and then also like text messages like come on like these text messages are out there like i don't know it's so funny to see them like warm in their chair and like in retrospect try to explain what they were saying like oh yeah like you know it says have a great day it's a sunny day and it's like why would you be texting this if this woman just extorted you for money to the gym none of that is what it appears to be it's something else <laughs> what does it say Oh, I love, oh, I love this organization. Head to the gym. Are you taking the kids to the beach? It's so nice. It's beautiful. Probably the pool. Nice. Have fun. Ethan must be happy. Just got back from the pool. Hope you're doing okay. Hey, Charlie, I hope you're doing okay. I'm sorry that I extorted you for like, you know, a third of a million of a dollar, but I hope you're doing okay. I'm okay. Thanks for asking. Just going to try to rest. Oh God, Charlie, you think the jury are just idiots? This is so offensive. I absolutely did not go to the gym. I was trying to show her that I was, you know, pretending like nothing ever happened and looking past it. Hi, Diane. There's but nothing on the wire. Oh, those hours of you talking. There is nothing on the wire about the extortion, this layer one of extortion, because she told you not to talk about it, right? She told me to never talk about anything to anyone or her. She never wanted to hear about it again. Yesterday, in your testimony, between you and your attorney, you mentioned the word extortion 123 times. Would you take my word for that? I'm sure it came up a lot. Okay. She count. But nowhere, even in the midst of this whole second extortion, it's happening again. It's an extension of the same thing. Do you mention anything about this layer one of the extortion? Do you? Yes, actually, I did. Okay. Um, 
if you pull up the video from Matsuri when I was sitting with my dad, and mm -hmm. I said, and the funny thing is, that's what I whispered in his ear. Oh, what? no. Wait, is it like I whispered in his ear, but you couldn't pick it up because I was whispering in his ear? <laughs> but we can't hear that. Right, because that's my point. I never wanted anybody to hear what had happened. I never wanted the police to come talk to me. But if you put up that video, you'll actually see me saying that it's my dad's ear, and that's why I went in and said it. And that's what we were talking about at the time. Can you right. Surrey, the only time you mention the extortion, it's in a whisper that is not picked up by the microphones, right? Intentionally, yes. Yes. And, and, and that was intentional at the time, but it sucks for your defense, right? Because that would be a huge piece of evidence for you to show this jury, wouldn't it? No, I, th I think you'd, you'd come up with a reason why uh, that I said it anyway. And, and there's nobody to corroborate this testimony? You're dead? There is. Okay. And the Matt Surrey, you talked about it again out in the parking lot, right? Wasn't that your testimony? Yes, we, we spoke in the parking lot. Okay, so you did talk about the extortion. That's you just right. didn't do it in a way that it was captured on any of the recordings in this case. Well, we, we spoke when we had privacy. Well, you had privacy on the phone, right? When? I was watching a Vanderpump Rules reunion recently because um, I was like super late to the game. I was watching the reunion and because one of the girls had a restraining order on another girl, they had to split the two girls when doing the reunion. So like one girl be reacting the trailer while the rest of the people are on the set doing the reunion. I wish we could have a camera on Donna Adelson and Harvey and see their reaction to everything when Charlie's testifying. I just want to see their reaction. I mean, we're not going to get that, of course, but it would be so cool to see their reaction. Anyways, I thought it was so funny because like when they were on the stage talking, you would see like one of the girls reaction in the trailer and she was like reacting to like everything that was happening. And it was hilarious, man. At least you thought you had privacy on the phone. Oh, every time. Hey, Thomas. You were on the phone for no, hundreds of hours on the no, flyer. No, there's, there's always a chance that I was being listened to. Okay. I mean, well, there was a chance you were being listened to when you whispered in Dad's ear, right? But you said it. And you were talking well, about I, it. I, whisper, I whispered real quietly into his ear, so I, I thought I had privacy. <gasps> at, that, at that point, I thought I had privacy. And Darn, Catherine McVanawa and you discussed this first layer of extortion in the car outside of Dolce Vita, too, right? That's, that's when I found out everything that was going on she... i've listened to the dolce vita recording the matsuri one have i listened to that recording yet it's like who was that matsuri again it was like charlie his dad was there anyone else or is it just them two she opened up when I confronted but if her. this jury could hear that conversation recorded we would all be hearing basically what you're telling us that there was an extortion effort that predated the undercover operation would right, we? because I was trying to see if Sigfredo was behind the extortion of my mom because I knew he was behind. I had a always had a feeling he was behind what happened to me, and she was having this explosive fight with him, and it was going on the same exact time that my mom started getting extorted, so I thought that he was going after my mom. Don't you wish that that conversation in the car had been recorded? Um, I don't know. Wouldn't it prove your theory? Yeah. So you're talking about the prior extortion. Then, then you'd know exactly what happened back then. But unfortunately, it wasn't recorded, and then everything that was recorded inside the restaurant, you don't mention it, right? I'm speaking very carefully. I mean, I, and I was still, even when I was in the car with Katie, she was doing most of the talking. That was the first time she really opened up, and I think I caught her off guard. I was still, even when I spoke to her in the car, I was real careful. I said, it was T behind, it was T behind what happened to me. Like, I wouldn't even say the words to her when I was in the car. Okay, it was T behind what happened to me. Do you say anything anywhere on the wire about referencing what happened to me? Meaning, what happened to me before? Um, no, because that was the only time I ever confronted her. But I, I did, actually, when I, would, when I would be on the wire with my mom, and I would say, this is, it's not the same person. Like, that was in reference to what happened to me, and she what knew What call that. do you say? Sorry, when he's saying on the wire, does that mean, like, telephone call? What the fuck does on the wire mean? Is that, like, an app or something? <laughs> what does that mean? the same person like that was in reference to what happened to me and she what knew call do you say it's not the same person uh okay you want to know a call it was yeah. tuesday the 26th um and i i said it's at the end of the call it was a two minute and something call april 26 april 26 2016 it was a two minute and something call it was towards the very end and I go, I know it's not done like this. It's 48 hours. Just Oh, okay. So like the phone calls that are being wired tapped. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I was like, wait, what are we, why are we saying wired? Okay. Thanks, Stevie. Hi, Rain. Hello, Wayne. How are you doing today? Wait, Rain and Wayne. That sounds so, <laughs> was so weird saying it out loud. Hi, Rain. And hi, Wayne. <laughs> 
Thanks, y'all. I was like, what are we talking about on the wire? Enough time. It's not the same person. So you can look. Oh, I get what George is going with this. She's like saying, that like, hey, like, we wiretapped your shit and you did not mention this extortion that Katie put upon you. Get up. And he's like, whoa, <laughs> it's just too bad that it wasn't picked up. I don't know. <laughs> 48 hours, just enough time. It's not the same person. Hi, Dory. So you can look it up. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's not the same person you were referencing as the person that blackmailed me years ago. And has been blackmailing me for years. Yeah. That, that's what you meant. It's not the same person that's extorting me, correct? <laughs> All right. So I want to go back to Wendy. Wendy is in the process of relocating from Tallahassee to South Florida, basically the day that this is going on, day after the money drop, right? They're, they're packing up the car. They're coming back. Yeah. Right. So she's going to be moving significantly closer to the killers that had threatened her life. This, this what I don't, I don't, she wasn't planning a, it wasn't a permanent move or anything that was planned. I think she took a suitcase with her. Oh, true. Oh my god, this falls apart so easily. It's like, Charlie, the people that extorted you live in Miami. Your sister was planning to move from Tallahassee to Miami. Why would you let her do that? She's being, she's gonna get closer to the killers. Oh no. Oh my god, he really does think the jury is they're just like full of idiots. But she's your family member, yes. She's much closer to the one they've already killed than you, right? She's, say it again. She's much closer. She's got much deeper connections to the person they've already killed. That's Dan Markell than you do. Right. I mean, there's a reason to fear for her safety because these killers have come. They've just killed Dan. And now they're saying they're going to kill another one. It could be Wendy, right? She, she has no idea what's going on. Exactly. But you let her move from Tallahassee to Miami where you knew the killers were located. That's my point. Yikes. Do you agree with that? The, the killers were able to find Dan Markell in Tallahassee. They have a car. They were. But would you rather live in Tallahassee or in Miami if the killers are in Miami? I think if these people want to find you, they'll find you. Okay. I mean, I, I don't think, I mean, looking at Luis Rivera, I don't think a, I don't think a distance would stop him. Okay. Where did Wendy and the boy... Dude, and the fact that he smoothly, so easily, just lies up on the stand. Oh, God. Always live when she first moved to South Florida. Um, when she first moved to South Florida, she moved in with my parents into a small apartment. They actually had to get another apartment because that one was too small. With your parents? She moved in with them, yeah. And I want to talk about the cameras. You bought cameras for the Adelson Institute in, in your home at Whale Harbor, right? Yes. The camera system? Yeah. All right. And what about Wendy's? I guess she didn't have a place. So, like, wherever she was staying with your parents, were cameras installed there as well at that same time frame that you installed these cameras? No, I, I never told her what happened, but they lived in a very secure building. Isn't it true, Doctor, that you'd been planning to install those cameras for some time before the murder? I, I actually already had cameras at my house um, that I had installed in 2008. The technology from 2008 to 2014 had changed a lot when it came to cameras. Yeah. Um, I my, think you my mentioned that. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. I think you mentioned all that on direct. I'm referring to this particular update that was done post homicide. You were in communication with this camera guy, and I think your lawyer mentioned this. Wait, where are we going with the camera? Oh my gosh, dude, there's this other case that I've been following that has been like making me mold so much. But um, the stepdad dropped off his daughter or stepdaughter at, or sorry, mom's boyfriend. Sorry, mom's boyfriend drops off his girl's daughter at school drops her off okay and she goes missing and on that same day he somehow accidentally factory reset his phone how do you fucking accidentally reset your goddamn phone <laughs> god these people man oh the lies the lies and they actually they expect people to believe it it's like oh i i don't know i factory reset my phone max i don't know how i did it. i did it accidentally it's like oh okay yeah we totally believe you sure mm-hmm you had 84 text messages with him dating back to January 20th of 2014 in regards to the update that occurred post-murder. Do you agree with that? I know I know. there was always talk that we were going to get cameras in the office, and we just never got around to it. When this happened, um, that that week within probably... Listen, I love Lord of the Rings, but he looks like a jacked-up version of Frodo, okay? <laughs> three days, I called the camera guy up, and I said, How's, I want to get cameras in my house, and my new cameras for my house, and I want to get cameras in my office. How soon can you come out and do it? And then he came out, I'd say four or five days after that, bought the equipment and installed it that week. Did hey, you hire good a guy. private investigator to help you with this whole problem you were having? With the extortion? Yes. No, I didn't tell anybody. Did you get a bodyguard? No, I, I carried a gun on me and I would sleep with a gun next to me in bed and 
carried a gun on my person and had a gun in my car at all times. Do you recall a statement you made on the Dolce Vita recording that said you were going to start carrying a gun? Yeah, because I, for a long time I, after this happened, I was carrying a gun, and I, it's it's uncomfortable, and I don't. You know what? I love how Charlie keeps trying to come across as casual and laid back. Mm hmm. I think he's had lots of practice with maybe Donna, maybe maybe the dad too as well. Um, yeah, and then you know Donna probably gave Charlie that pep talk as well. Like, okay, what was it? What, what did she say about Wendy again? Wendy's gonna give the performance of her life or some bullshit like that. She probably said the same thing about Charlie. Okay, like Charlie, you are gonna give the performance of your life. You're gonna convince these motherfuckers, these jurors in fucking Tallahassee's. Okay, these like broke back, like I don't know, these like country people, bumpkins. Okay, you're gonna convince them that you're the wealthy doctor, that you had nothing to do with this, and you're just this poor guy who was extorted by these people. You know, these gang members, this Southeast Asian American girl, whatever. And like he was probably like, yes mom I'm, I'm i got this i got this mom we got this and they probably practice okay <laughs> it was like carrying a gun so I, I hadn't carried a gun in a while and i was gonna start carrying one again but you did say in 2016 i'm gonna start carrying one yeah i carried probably for about four to six months after this happened and uh and i wear scrubs so the, the gun that i had c can kind of stick out and it's uncomfortable but i prefer not to carry a gun so you quit Wait, so um, I might have missed it. Where was she going with the camera thing? So, like, there was cameras, and then, like, he talked to some camera dude about updating his camera stuff, and it was post-homicide, she said. Uh, what were we getting with the camera thing? I might have, I might have missed it. Sorry. Carrying it but during the time you were still paying the extortion money. Yes. All right, and the extortion money that you were paying, $3,000 a month, that wasn't going towards the principal of whatever was left on the 333000 right? Didn't you testify to that? Correct. All right, so mm -hmm. you never came up with the remaining bulk of the money that you owed. Never. Wait, what about the money for the boob job? Was that also part of the extortion? What about the car, that like piece of shit car that she gave to um, Katie? They gave Katie um, a car, and I was like, oh, maybe they bought her like a brand new BMW or some shit. Like, no, they gave her like some old ass crusty car that was like, <laughs> that was uh, Harvey's old car or something. <laughs> Hi, Yoshi, how are you doing today? How's it going? <laughs> I think, um, dude this is so funny i had someone come into my chat and their username is corgi like just corgi i want their username so bad and it's funny because now when you guys are tagging me corgi son it just tags corgi oh, what an awesome username and nobody ever came after you for that no they said you could pay it all off and it'll be done or just pay your pay three thousand a month so I, I thought about paying the full amount all right then a couple weeks later after the initial extortion you and Catherine magdano broke up according to your direct do i have that right that's not correct but when did you break up uh within a week i, I met her we went out to dinner I went out to eat and i, I just said this has got to end all right uh, so we you were... broke up with her yes weren't you scared that if you broke up with her that she would sick the latin kings on you exactly no because i had every intention of paying every month when when i broke up with her and i said listen i don't want to surround myself with this i'm scared she said that she was going to come every month and pick up the money and protect me. And she and you know that goes against. Remember, after she extorted him and took the money, the next day when they were texting and everything looked fine, he was like, "Oh, well, the reason why I texted her saying I'm going to the gym because I just want to make sure she knew that like you know things were okay and that like you know I was just chilling. I don't know. I feel like you wouldn't be breaking up with her then. You would just continue the relationship and let it fizzle out or somehow like maybe make her break up with you. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Charlie. We're not buying it. She understood. I mean, she our relationship was on the rocks. Uh, but you've July. testified that all the gifts and stuff that you gave her were to keep her happy, right? Yeah, when I when I realized that she's the one who's protecting me and she wasn't a part of this extortion, I had no problem keeping her happy and I looked for things to do, nice things to do for her because she was broke. But not worried about pissing her off by breaking up with her. Well, she our relationship was definitely on the rocks mm. uh, after July first when Sigfredo cut me off and threatened me and called my dad. And then she knew I didn't even invite her to my dad's birthday party, which was a family gathering with family friends on July 5th. Um, she knew we were pretty much, we were gonna be done. After you broke up with Catherine Magdanawa a week after the murder, did you continue to talk to her? We, we still communicated for sure. Talk on the phone? And texted, yeah. And meet up? No, the only time I would see her was, I saw her again at the end of August. She came and picked up the money. And that's when she asked me if I could put her on the books 
because none of this money was going to her. And she oh, was it an old Lexus? I just remember it was like an old car. At first, I was like, oh, maybe it's like some retro, restored Mercedes. Like, you know, like one of those like really cool, like, um, I don't know, like old cars, right? That's been restored. Looks like a classic or something like that. But then I'm like, I think I read it. I was like, wait, what? They just gave her like an old, it was like, it was like a 1998 Lexus. I don't know. It was something, something like that. And I was like, what? <laughs> Yes, Corey is in the dog breed. Needed to get health insurance for her kids. So I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do it, help you out. And did you continue to hook up with her after the breakup? And by that, I mean, you know, have sex with her. There was one occasion. There was one time that we hooked up. Okay, when was that? Was, did you buy her I boobies? Say it was probably about five months after we broke it up. Okay, well, there was one other occasion before that in October of 2014. Um, do you recall that? October 9th of 2014? That's that's probably the occasion I'm talking about. It's July. Let me count the months: July, August, September, October. So okay, so four months. It's okay, been and then there's another years. one on October fifteenth. You remember that one? No, I, I think I just I think we did hook up about one time. Okay, well, one time on October 9th and one time on October fifteenth. I thought it was one time. If it, if it was two times, it's been. Could it have been two times? No, but no more. Okay, and on August twenty fifth, fourteen. That would have been after the breakup, right? Yeah. You text her, and then she replies, I don't need help, I'm good. Don't need favors, nor will I trust anyone again. Erase my number, please. Go on with your life like you did already and have been doing. Wait, what happened? Sorry we spoke today. I don't want to stress your life more. Don't do anything for me. Do you remember receiving that text from Captain Mabanwa? Yeah, sounds familiar. And that's a pretty weird text to get from the extortionist. You're meeting <laughs> her to give her money. Why is she saying erase my number? She's not the extortionist. <laughs> In, that, in, 2000, see, you're, in 2014, mm -hmm. I didn't think she was the extortionist. Right, but it's been revealed that she was. Uh, in 2019. So you're taking what was known in 2019. And you're no, trying Charlie, you dumbass. She's trying to say that, like, if she was the extortionist, would an extortionist really sound like this? And he's saying, that, like, oh, I didn't know she was an extortionist. But like, yes. But now we know that she's an extortionist. Why would an extortionist say, hey, delete my number when he was still making payments to her? I to say I knew what I knew in I'm not trying to say you knew. I'm trying to say <laughs> she knew. Georgia, I got you, Georgia. I got you, Georgia. <laughs> I don't know if Charlie is like genuinely confused on the stand or if he's just playing dumb. She knew she was the extortionist. Why is she telling you to erase her number and leave her alone? Because I broke up with her. Exactly. On 9-14, or 9-11 of 14, she sends you hashtag bestie for life. Do you remember that? <laughs> Sounds familiar. So did you all have some kind of reconciliation after the breakup? No, I, I was probably doing a favor and making her happy with something. On 10-6 of 2014, I love you. It makes me feel good that you care about me. I'm lucky to have you as part of my life. Do you remember sending that to her? Yeah. On 10-9 of 14, I mentioned the sex talk. I won't go into the details of it. Again, 10-15, more sex talk. 1023 of 14. Thank you again for everything you're doing for my mommy. She sends you that. What were you doing for her mother? I don't know. Sex I talk. I, was gonna, I did a consult for her, but I didn't do anything for her mom. More sex 224 talk. 224 of 15. You agree that she always knows how to make you smile, and you say I love you to her. Remember that? Yeah, I, I cared a lot about Katie, and I didn't think that she was a part of this, so I was always trying to keep her happy and make her happy, and I felt like she got caught up, dragged into something that she shouldn't have been dragged into. Okay, maybe. Hi, Christine. How are you doing today? I mean, I think when if Donna goes up there and testifies, I think we're going to see the same level of arrogance. I do. The arrogance. Oh, man. I don't want to say confidence. What's another word for confidence where it's like. That's a word that I'm thinking of. Arrogance. Fuck, there's another word for um, confidence. Arr, what am I thinking of, guys? What am I thinking of? What am I thinking of? There's a word. There's a word. There's a word. There's a word. Shiro's here. Shiro's hanging out. He's doing good i mean i feel like i don't know something about corgis it's like they're always trying to kill themselves or something they're always trying to get into some mess they're always trying to eat things it's like they just want to die 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 i don't know why shiro just keeps getting into trouble you know he keeps getting to things to get into and i try so hard to like watch him to make sure that he's not eating cat poop doesn't get jardia again but he's just a little troublemaker <laughs> Um, entitled entitled was one of them but that's not the word i was thinking of hubris came into my mind but i felt like it wasn't strong enough but she dragged you into it as well. I, I didn't see it like that at all. And our relationship actually got stronger. You know, initially when I got extorted, I had limited contact with her and I was cold to her. And then over time, I realized that she's the one who's protecting me. 
and she's not involved with these people because the extortion never went up and Katie was always broke. So she was involved with them because she was had a child with the guy, right? <laughs> I didn't know for sure it was him. But, but you she, suspected always that it was him. I always suspected that Sigfredo was behind this. So yeah. wouldn't you want to distance yourself from this woman who, I mean, were you ever really that serious about her to begin with? Um, I mean, we, we spent seven, eight months together. But, but you were never considering marrying her. No, I wasn't considering I mean, her. you were a playboy, right? You had a zillion girlfriends. That's, that is actually not even true. Because life is hard when you have little legs and a big butt. He's got small legs and a big head. <laughs> you hear that, Shiro? He heard you guys. He heard you guys. I don't know if you guys can see him. He's in a little bed right now. It's, he's like, he's so short and he's so low to the ground that like everything's just within like distance of him just like snatching up. You have to be really proactive, but oh my God. He's like, he's quick, man. He's a quick boy. Um, anyone say funny? Oh yeah. What's uh, the judge is so, um, is supposed to be making the rule about that, right? Cocky. Oh, cocky. Yes. That's the word that I was looking for. Cocky. Yes. Thank you. Cocky. Gatsby. Oh, Gatsby. So cute. I wanted to get the Gatsby. Um, what was it again? Was it a beach blanket or a tote? Oh my God. It was so cute. And they made like a little Gatsby little like toy thing. Oh, so cute. I love Gatsby. Okay. Did you have a lot of girlfriends? I had two girlfriends in the two or three years after her. I dated, mm. I dated Whitney Kick for <laughs> nine months. Okay, okay but how many women mm. were you talking to and engaging with sexually? A lot more than Whitney Kick, right? There, there could have been one or two. Or more. No. Okay. Point being, you were not going to marry Captain Night Banawa. I wasn't having marriage plans, no. Okay. And you have now broken up with her after this incident. Yes. She's the person that's taking the money from you physically. She's the one. I looked at it. She's the one who's protecting me. If, if she wasn't, I was going to get a visit. Is from she somebody. the one that was physically taking the money? Yes. Is she the one that was connected to the person you suspected to have killed your brother-in-law? Mm -hmm. I thought she was tied to that person. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she's the one that got you into this, right? Because she ran her mouth. Mm -hmm. I, I looked at that. I ran my mouth too. And if I never said anything to her, this would never have happened. So I, I felt responsible for saying something to her in the first place. But you didn't feel responsible enough to try to do anything about her sitting in jail, an innocent woman, for three years, did you? She never contacted me. You didn't offer to testify in her trial. You let her get convicted and get life in prison, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I, I thought the truth was going to come out. But not mm -hmm. through you. I was never contacted. I thought it was going to come out through her. Was there any contact between your lawyers and her lawyers? You'd have to ask them. You said you didn't have any contact with her. I had, Did you have I had any contact? zero contact with her. So your lawyers didn't tell you anything on behalf of her lawyers? Absolutely not. And her lawyers didn't hear anything from your lawyers? I don't know what lawyers talk about, but I can tell you that I never talked to Katie, and I never told my lawyers. You never relayed a message through your lawyers that the Adelson family would not be talking in this case? Absolutely not. And she had nothing to worry about as far as that end was concerned? That's not true at all. I don't believe that. Did you or your agent contact her brother to offer to assist with her attorney's fees in her case? That's a complete lie. Do we have the text messages? On 1027 of 15, you say you can't wait to get lunch with her. She's the best, and you're lucky to have her as a friend for life. Did you say that? Yes. 1027 15, you can't wait to get lunch with her. 1030 15, you tell her you miss her. 12 9 of 15, again, you tell her she's the best. Yeah, I said all those things. Do you agree? Hey, as long as Georgia doesn't get into like the phone sex talk stuff. <laughs> you guys ever watch um, Jody Arias' case where they were listening to the were they were they voice messages? I don't know why there there were like recordings of like um, I think Jody doing like phone sex or something like that, and like we're just like listening to it in like court. I was just, like, see that this picture does not look like a relationship between an extortionist and her victim. I, I agree, because Katie wasn't the extortionist. She was the extortionist. In 2014 and no. 2015, I didn't believe that. I know you didn't believe it, but we're looking back now, okay? You know, it's like, if you're gonna quote me, date me. Like, at what I knew in 2014 and what I knew in 2015 is not what I know now in 2023. Okay, yes, I hear you. You didn't know then, and that's why you were nice to her. Yeah, I thought she was protecting me. Got it. And none of those factors that I pointed out weighed into that consideration, that she ran her mouth, that she brought the Latin Kings on you, she was taking the money from you. Yes, none David. None of that counterbalanced it. <laughs> you were still going to be friends with her and keep her happy. You're wrong. I, I didn't know about the Latin Kings in 2014 or 2015. Right. The love text, which is what I'm referring to all these texts, where 
you're still nice to this person after you break up with her. You're still doing favors for this person after you break up with her. And that's like a major problem for your defense, isn't it? No, our relationship got stronger. I agree. Our relationship got stronger, but it was much different. Isn't How was he appearing? Oh, you know what? I remember I wanted to watch this with you guys. Um, it's still, but I haven't seen it yet. Oh, yes. Let's watch it real quick. <laughs> It's like three minutes long. What I enjoy most about our practice is this restoring music. a person's smile. That often changes their personality and gives them a more positive outlook on life. Our practice uses State the most the modern art. dental technology. From Friendly customer service. Computer-generated ceramic restoration. Professionals. Digital radiographs, intraoral photography, and of course, Do we, get to see Charlie we in here? use nitrous oxide. And oh, there's Charlie. For the highest level of Whose car we got there? Harvey Adelson, Charlie Adelson. And relaxation. What I enjoy most <laughs> oh, wait, about our practice is restoring a positive. <laughs> hey, so Does he talk? My name is Dr. Charlie Adelson, and I am a. Hello. What is this? <laughs> what is this audio? I can't hear shit. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna really boost it. If you have headphones on. Um, just be careful. Periodontist, owner, and co-partner with my father, Dr. Harvey Adelson, who's a cosmetic dentist. Wait, can you? I, I couldn't hear anything. Did you guys hear anything? I cannot hear shit. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. What did, what did he say? What I love about what I do is being able to restore people's smiles and change the way they chew change the way they live and change their self-esteem oh hold on a second um the audio is fucked if you're listening on the right earbud it's not working on the left side on the left side it's only on the left side team and how they think about themselves on a daily basis when a patient comes to my office they're being treated like family mm. and it's also being a team approach you know, Dan Markell was at some point family, and look at how he was treated. Where the hygienist, the cosmetic dentist, and the periodontist are all working together to give them the optimal result. Experiences have my, um, I would my office, have my cousin, Tyler. Oh, I feel bad for the testimonials. Take them out of here. <laughs> Take them out of here. I'm pretty sure they don't want to have anything to do with this. That why she has to be. Agree. Our relationship. And that's like a major problem for your defense, isn't it? No, our relationship got stronger. I agree. Our relationship got stronger, but it was much different. Isn't that why she has to be an innocent conduit between you and the bad guys? Because if those texts didn't exist, she would be the extortionist and the bad actor in this whole thing, right? I'm not following your theory. You have to explain away those texts, don't you, doctor? No, I have to sit here and tell you the truth. And now you're finding it out. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Listen, we're just late to the truth, okay? Charlie had the truth with him the entire time, and we're just late to it, okay? He's filling us in right now. What a great guy. Most people don't send kissy faces to people that are extorting money out of them. I mean, she was taking your money. Again, Ms. Kaplan, she was not extorting me at the time. That's not how it's done, is it? I'm telling you how it was done. So then over these next two years, you would meet her monthly and hand over a bundle of checks and $3,000 in cash, right? No, you're wrong. Okay, tell me. I would hand me over $2,000 in cash and a bundle of checks. $2,000 in cash and a bundle of checks. And so over the course of two... Dude, seeing him sit here be so smug and like, just now he like shook his head at Georgia. It's like, no one's playing this act. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're not. $2,000 in cash and a bundle of checks. And so over the course of two years... You guys ever seen someone at a customer service line and they are just like generally in the fucking wrong, but they'll try to rally everyone around them to be on their side by like being all fussy about it and making like, oh, God, I can't believe this. Like, oh, can you guys believe this? Like, oh my God, I can't believe they're doing this to me. It's like, bitch, you're in the wrong. Shut up. <laughs> years. I'm terrible at math, but that's roughly how much money? Because I did, I think I did $3,000. That's $48,000 in cash in addition to the 138 you provided the night of. Do you agree with that? If your math is correct, I'm just telling you what I paid her each month. And and the checks, which is another seventeen thousand dollars, right? You're doing the math. Okay. It was a lot of money. Was it a lot of money to you? It was a lot of money to me. Yeah, I work hard. Did 
did the <coughs> did the extortionists, whoever they were, ever try to increase the payments or come for more money? The, the extortion never went up, and Katie was always broke, and that's what led me to think that she was not a part of this because she could. Hey, doing math on the spot is a little bit hard. Okay, wait, really? The thumbnail was from the rush shooting on your video. Hmm. Do I have the wrong thumbnail up? Could have easily jacked up the the payments. Well, she's sharing three grand a month. With ah! Shit. Why is Hannah on my thumbnail? <laughs> oh my god, you're the first person to say that's subliminal. <laughs> Your thumbnail's Hannah. Oh no! Whoops, did I forget to change my thumbnail? Oh dude, people are probably like, what the fuck is going on with Corgi? Listen, I, I had my blood drawn this morning, okay? I went to the doctors, I woke up early today. I have issues. Hold on. <laughs> Subliminal, thank you. I saw your comment earlier and I was like, wait, what are they trying to say? <laughs> um, is it updated now? Shit. <laughs> thank you, Subliminal. <laughs> thank you, David. Or was it, who was that the other one? <laughs> yeah, your sub knows Hannah. Whoops. A bunch of other people, right? At least one other person. I didn't think she was sharing. Why is she coming to me for $300 for her kid's birthday? Because she's. Wait, okay, I gotta go back. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I had the wrong thumbnail. I hope YouTube will. YouTube, please update it for me. I don't know if they'll update it for me. I don't know. I don't know how it works. It's... Well, she's sharing three grand a month with a bunch of other people, right? At least one other person. I didn't think she was sharing. Why is she coming to me for $300 for her kid's birthday? Because she's broke. Because she wasn't getting any of the because money. Half of three grand doesn't do much when you're living in Miami with two kids to feed, right? I didn't think Oh, she... he's trying to say that the monthly payments were not going to Katie. The monthly payments were going to whoever was extorting him through Katie. Oh my lord, this is so convoluted. Not sharing anything. Well, even if she was sharing, if that's your point. She must not have been taking the money because she was broke. And my point is, she could have been taking half the money and then broke. That's not how it's I not saw it. not a lot of money. That's not how I saw it. Tell me about Dan Martell a little bit. What you sort of said, what I heard, correct me if I'm wrong, was he was, you know, a nice enough guy, typical Wendy boyfriend, but not really your kind of guy. Yeah, I think it's an accurate description. All right. Do you agree that he was this brilliant legal mind? I, mean, I think he was a, a little on the nerdy, nice guy. Um, just kind of like the average guy that my sister dated. Not the kind of guy you, you want to have a beer with, though. Um, we never had a beer together. I mean, not that I wouldn't have had a beer if he wanted to have one. We just didn't have that much in common, but he was always nice to me. Do you appreciate the fact that his death was a terrible loss to his sons? It was horrible. Do you I... think they were better off without him? Absolutely not. Did you host a celebration dinner after his murder? That's a complete lie. Oh, I want to know more about the celebration dinner. They kept bringing this up, the celebration dinner. I think this was weeks after Dan Markell was murdered, and then Wendy, for some reason, threw up at the table. Ew, gross. Ugh. On the wire, would you agree that the Markel boys were in the background pretty much of every call you had with your mom? I mean, we hear them a lot, right? My, my sister was working, so my parents would help my sister out, yeah. Yeah, and it was summertime, so they were out of school, I would assume. I don't, I don't know if it was every call, but they, they definitely helped my sister out for sure. All right, and those calls captured Donna pushing them on the swings, that call that tortured all of us a couple times. Remember that one? Yeah, there was a call where she was pushing them on the swings. Taking them to tennis lessons. That, yes. was, that was the same day. I mean, that was the same call that got broken up, and she called me back, but yes. Doing their bedtime routine. Helping my sister out, for sure. Reading stories, brushing teeth, getting haircuts, going to piano, story time and bedtime, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. All stuff that parents and grandparents do, you're right. All right, she even said to you on one of the calls regarding the bedtime routine that, quote, we have a whole routine going. Do you remember that? I think it, I have a whole routine with my son. I mean, I think it's normal with the kids. You have a routine to put them to bed. Right, all the brush kind of teeth. things. Can't forget to brush your teeth. All the, yeah. Well, dental humor couldn't hurt, right? What's that? All the, kind, all the things that, that, you know, your mom wouldn't have been able to do as readily if the kids were living in Tallahassee. Agree with that? I mean, when they come up to visit them, they'd be doing the same thing. Sure, when they came up to visit, but now they're doing it every day, right? Almost not, every day. Not every day, but when my sister needed them, she helped them out. And these are all things, these little routine <coughs> things that Dan Markell will never be able to do with his sons. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Does your mom have a favorite child? Uh, she says she doesn't have favorites, but I don't think she likes my older brother. Okay. But is Wendy the favorite? Um, I'd like to think it's a tie between okay. me and her. Does your mom worry more about Wendy than... Yeah, I feel like Wendy was definitely, like, the coddled one. You? Mm. But she's the youngest, right? Yeah, she's the youngest. Well, it's... I don't really get... Before this case. No, I don't... I mean, I don't... 
I think maybe in different parts of my life, she's probably more concerned about me. Different parts of my sister's life, she may be more concerned about her. Is it true that your mom has a tendency to worry herself sick if there's something going on with one of you kids? No, nah, I mean, she's, she's a concerned mom, but I think she's a normal mom. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, the older brother, Rob, um, was on a podcast that we listened to. Yeah, it seems like he cut the family off. Good for him, because, you know, his family had drama with his, um, with his current wife so i mean i'd probably be doing the same thing it's like oh my god like i don't want to deal with this family like look what they did to dan markell they didn't like me at some point what's something what if something happens to me i don't know i would be so paranoid so it's a good thing they cut them off or cut, it's a good thing he she, cut them off you pretty worried about wendy's marital problems no she wasn't i think no i think she'd get upset when my sister would tell her things that danny was doing and going to work bad mouthing her but i think mm -hmm. any parent would get upset but also she would meticulously go through all the filings and send long emails <laughs> detailing her thoughts about every filing in this divorce. No, I don't, I don't think that's the case at all. Okay. Did she hate Dan Markell? Um, I think she liked him in the beginning, for sure. And I think when he was being a, a jerk to my sister, I think that I don't think anyone particularly liked him when he was being a jerk. What about the time, around the time that he was killed? Did your mother hate Dan Markell? No, I think it, it kind of like tapered off. I think it's, it was only, she only disliked him when he was being mean to my sister. Other than that, Nobody had a problem. He with was being mean to your sister during these divorces. And remember, this family had Dan Markell killed because was Dan Markell abusing Wendy in any way? Was it like physical abuse? Was it like severe emotional abuse? No, it's because he was being mean to her. They said like, oh, you know, he made her feel like she wasn't as smart. I feel like it was just like an ego thing. Proceedings and subsequent litigation, right? I think it was on and off. I think it was sporadic. And then remember, she's the one, Wendy's the one that um, one day like moved out all of her shit, took her two kids with her, and he had to deal with a divorce. They had to go through the divorce stuff. And of course, he was going to fight with her back and forth, you know, and all the kids and all that stuff. But like, dude, I don't know. It's just like, it's just so wild to me. This, cra this family is like crazy. They are fucking batshit crazy. Crazy. And when your mom's worried about Wendy, does she come to you for solutions or to talk things out? No, I don't think it was, I don't think worried is the right word to describe it. Does she ever make Wendy's problems your problems? No. Like convincing you to pull, get Wendy to pull the plug on the house on Halloween 2013? Um, Didn't she convince you to sort of take up that cause? No, that was actually me. I thought I shared my thoughts on homeownership for my sister. That was all me. Didn't you say that if she had bought that house, that would have been the second worst decision of Wendy's life? I thought it was going to be a stupid decision to buy that house. And what, would have, what was the first worst decision of Wendy's life? Oh, I thought when she... I mean, looking at hindsight 2020, I think when she, she agreed when she married Dan. And during this time, Wendy was a grown-ass fucking woman. Like, I think she was in her, like, 30s, mid-30s, right? She wasn't, like, a teen mom or anything like that where she needed a mom and, like, older brother to come help her out in her marriage and shit. She was, like, a grown-ass woman in her, like, fucking mid-30s, okay? She had, like, two kids. They were married for a couple of years. Like, <laughs> crazy is what crazy doesn't. And did you convince her to take a particular job as well? Remember that call? Um, yeah, she, uh, she got an offer from a law firm and she was debating whether or not she should take it. She didn't know if it was exactly what she wanted to do. And I was like, hey, you don't, you don't know what you don't like doing until you've done it. it. seems like a great opportunity. Like, why not do it? Learn the job skill. It's a skill you don't. She's like, well, I don't have that skill. And I'm like, well, it's a good opportunity to learn it. And you may like it. And if you don't like it, then try something else. But I was trying to encourage her to, to take what sounded like a great opportunity. And mom shared your thoughts. And I'm referring to Donna Adelson. Shared your thoughts about this opportunity being a good one for Wendy, right? Um... I probably heard about the job from my mom, but I definitely heard about it from my sister because I'm talking to my sister about it. Yeah, I mean, the job was not what she was had any experience in, right? It was a whole other field of law. Then that, that was my point. It was like, well, why not take it if they're offering it to you and you can learn something new? It sounds like a great opportunity. Do you and Donna know what's best for Wendy better than she knows herself? Mm -hmm. No, but not at all. Mm -hmm. Were you a spy when it came to Wendy? Did you get information from Donna, I mean, from Wendy and relay it to, to Donna? At times, because I was I was dating Bree, and Bree worked for Dave, so I would I would hear stuff about Dave from Bree, so I kind of had an inside uh, I got inside information. In what capacity did Bree work for Dave? Dave was his uh, after she graduated from college, she was uh, working as a nanny for Dave. Right, and how old was Bree during the time you were dating her? Was she significantly younger than you? Um, she was twenty four, and is, I was thirty nine. Is that the is Bree the mother of your child? She is the mother of my child. Yeah. All right, so back to Wendy, Wendy and Donna. So Wendy, was she tight-lipped with Donna about her private life? Um, I don't think she shared everything. But she would tell things to you that she wouldn't tell to Donna. I'm, I can't say that for sure. 
Can you play clip one, please? Publishing call E E E. <coughs> What's the clip? E E E. I love it when they're like, get the exhibits up. All right, what are the exhibits? What do we got here? <coughs> this is his attorney, and then also Donna hired him for her trial too, <laughs> which is like weird, but. I mean, I heard that she was also going to hire, like, a local um, lawyer, local to Tallahassee. Yeah, would you? Baby boy was mama's messenger boy. I can see that. Oh, God. What is, is this? Is audio going to be bad? It's where are you going? On this way, just stop off it there. Where are you? Where are you going? On this place, I just stop off at there. Um. Anyway, so I I just put the tape now. Oh, did you? So I just put a little part. She's a few older than me. Uh huh. <laughs> but uh. Um, so I asked him when he his birthday. It turns out Wendy's making him a little party in Quinwood. Oh, really? Yeah, Wendy goes like very tight lips. You're not so, kidding. So what she needs to do uh -huh. is, you know, you know, she's obviously tight lips for a reason. It's because she doesn't want you to know anything. Anything, anything. <laughs> so my point is, if she doesn't want you to know anything, then don't ask anything. I don't know. She's happy. Yeah, and then yeah. I, and yeah. I can find everything out and just tell you. I know. So I, I was like, so what are you doing for your birthday? It's like, well, Wendy's making me like a little birthday dinner, a little get together party. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. He's like, yeah, she's, gonna, she's doing it. He's like, I don't know anything. All I know is Wendy's putting it together for me and she's doing it in Woodwood. So I'm like, oh, that's Oh, why didn't they show us this from the get go? <laughs> I'm trying to listen to this. Why don't you show me the transcript? Awesome. All I knew is that she was going straight from work to the hotel where everybody is meeting for the uh, this, this Miami fellows thing that she got. And uh, that she was going to be here tonight because um, it starts early first thing tomorrow morning. So I guess in between, she managed to do something else. <laughs> Which makes me happy. I'm really glad. So, oh, yeah. I couldn't imagine. Oh. Yeah, so. yeah, you sound good. Yeah. Do you remember yesterday saying I heard it was something about I guess maybe Wendy being tight lipped and she's tight lipped because she doesn't want Donna to know some things? You were telling a story about Katie coming in from having had a, some kind of altercation with Garcia and she had reported that the necklace had been just pulled off her neck. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. All right. And when you were relaying that story to the jury, you used a specific term describing what Garcia had done to her. Do you remember what that term was? Or was it? It was only yesterday, but you'll have to refresh my memory how I described it. You said he roughed her up. That's accurate. And that put my antenna up because that roughed up, roughed them up is the exact same phrase that Catherine Magbanoa said in her proffer that you used on Halloween 2013 when you first approached her about, does she know anyone who can rough someone up? No, I, th I think r getting roughed up is an adjective, but you're, you're, what you're doing is the same thing you did with your TV theory. Is like you heard TV mentioned multiple times, so you, you put the whole case together with the TV. Okay, and we'll you're get putting to the, the whole TV. case together with the word roughed up. Oh, don't worry, she'll get to the TV part. The TV part makes y'all families look really bad. Like, yeah, I mean, I I'm not putting some... the whole case you together. One moment, don't speak over each other. But that's Please an Please wait for him to answer, then you can answer, ask your next question. Go ahead. But that's an unusual, I mean, you know, it's a specific term. I'm not making a whole case out of it, but did you say roughed up in both places? Um, Katie was roughed up by Sigfredo when he tore the necklace off of her neck, yes. And isn't that the same term you used when you first broached Catherine Magbanoa about 
couldn't, did she know someone who could rough up someone else? Never in my life have I ever asked her that question. Never in my life. That conversation never took place. Did you ever hear Donna Adelson refer to Dan Markell as stupid? Uh, no. Were you laughing when Wendy was on the stand and I read all the names that Donna referred to Dan Markell as? No, I, I laughed when you said the word fucker in court. Okay. What did she mean when she said Dan Markell was trying to take her sunshines away? Do you know? My mom never said that. That was made up, and he put it in a court filing, and then now it becomes something that my mom said because someone made it up and put it in a court filing. We've heard Donna say sunshines before. Um, I remember hearing it. I don't know if it was in a phone call or did I read it in... I don't think it was in a transcript. Was it an email? But I remember her referring her grandchildren as like sunshines before. Now it becomes something that my mom said because someone made it up and put it in a court filing. Did my mom you, never said that. Did your mom refer to the children as her sunshines? No, the, the kids were three and four. A three and four-year-old can't repeat a conversation. Three and four-year-old? Yes, they can. I have a two-year-old and a half who tells us about the drama that happens at our daycare. <laughs> and remember words six hours later and repeat it accurately. I have, I have a five-year-old son. Never seen a three and four-year-old do that. So it was made up. And now you're repeating it. Maybe not accurately word for word, but at least the gist of it. Okay. Um, have you been a good brother to Wendy? I always try to be a good brother. Which conversation? The rough up someone or which one? No, I don't think three and four year olds are used as court witnesses. That'd be a little too much. Uh, I don't think so. I know like sometimes police will interview them, but court witnesses, I don't know about that. It sounds like maybe you're not agreeing that this was a really nasty divorce, or are you agreeing it was a nasty divorce? I mean, I don't think any divorces can be pleasant, but I think they definitely had their fights. I mean, they were fighting over bicycles and all kinds of crap. But, but in addition to that, Dan Markell accused your sister of fraud, right? He made an accusation, yeah. Threatened her with federal kidnapping charges? Oh, that's a new one. You just told me. That one's in the emails that are in evidence. Did you review those? I didn't review the federal kidnapping charges in this case. Um, was seeking contempt proceedings. You heard about that here in court, yes? I heard about that, yeah. Even went after her lawyer personally, right? He, he made serious threats against her lawyer. And her bar card. Because what happened was Dan Markell said that the kids went up to him and was like, oh, grandma thinks you're stupid. And he was like, oh, why does grandma think I'm stupid? And they were like, oh, grandma says you're trying to take their, her sunshines away, which, you know, I could totally see a kid repeating that. Could have been je in jeopardy if any of those or some of them. I, I heard yet the other day she was saying that, I guess her lawyer, he was threatening her lawyer's bar card. Her lawyer's bar card as well as, as Wendy's. He, he was making lots of threats and writing lots of stuff, I guess. And he messed with your mom, too, didn't he, in that grandma motion? You know which one I'm talking about? <laughs> I don't think he was messing with my mom. I mean, nobody took that seriously, and I don't think anyone even knew about it. Is it your later. mom? I'm sorry, finish. I said I don't think anyone even knew about it till years later. Isn't your mom notorious for always getting worked up about everything? She gets upset. I mean, she's a concerned mom. I mean, but, but is she notorious for getting really worked up about everything? Uh, to a certain extent. I mean, Aren't those your own words from Call S that's in evidence in this case? Yeah, yeah to a certain extent. That certain extent is a murder, isn't it? <laughs> Instead. So those are my words, but you, can, <laughs> you can't, on a, not to an extreme, but she does worry, especially when, like, Latin King gang members are extorting her for money. Did your mom take the grandma motion seriously? I don't think she even knew about it. She didn't talk to you about it? No. Was I didn't find email? out about it until years later. Wasn't this divorce a big deal in your family? Um, it didn't affect my life, I can tell you that. So I, I don't think that's true. I think it was a big deal in my sister's life. Why did Wendy testify that she was getting along well with Dan Markell just prior to his death? Can, you, can we agree that's not true? I think there were, there were ups and downs in how they got along. I mean, you got to ask her. She was on the stand. I mean, I wasn't living her life. Is it part of your defense to minimize 
how nasty and contentious this divorce was? Um, my defense is to tell the truth. <laughs> Who's this back here? Is she looking the jury? I feel like everyone's like looking over here. Are they looking the jury right now? Did you have any input on the decision to change the boys' names from Markel to Adelson? Absolutely not. Do you and Donna have to protect Wendy? No. Does Wendy appreciate everything you and Donna do for her? You got you got to ask her. I mean, she's my sister. I love her. I try to give her my best advice I can. If I I care about her, and I give her my advice whether she takes it or not is uh, is up to her. She's, she's well, according to a recent phone call, Donna was saying that Wendy was being a little ungrateful, that she's just being used as a glorified babysitter. She's a grown woman. Let me ask it another way. Do you feel, or isn't it true that you don't feel, that Wendy appreciates everything you and Donna do for her? My sister had no idea what I've been through in the last, God knows how many years, and what I've I wake up worrying, am I going to get killed? Am I going to get arrested? And she knows none of it. She's just <laughs> going around her life. And I had an, somewhat of an innate anger towards her, mm -hmm. you know, probably unjust because she didn't know what happened. But yeah, I, I was upset. And weren't you saying on the wire that you, that she doesn't appreciate what you and Donna have done for her? She, I, I don't know if I said that she doesn't appreciate what I've done for her because I never did anything for her. Okay. So that give, was my next question. What, what have you done for her? Nothing? Other than give her advice and care about her. Be a, big brother that loves her. Like, Would you say Wendy's a little bit spoiled? Um, in some in some regards, I mean, she gets a lot of help, for sure. How old is, is Wendy little, now? Like 40, 45? Less savvy about how the world works than you are? I don't know. I mean, you gotta ask her. Could you trust Wendy with a secret that could ruin your life? <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a secret. It's something that would get me killed, so I, I didn't <laughs> want to tell her. Can we agree that she obviously knew something about this crime? She Wendy in her big mouth. Wendy in her big mouth. Found out when she came to court. I, n I never told her anything. I'm talking about the murder, Dan Markell. She knew something, right? I mean, it's not a coincidence she went to the crime scene, is it? The, you're talking about the route that she took that day? I'm talking about her pulling up to the crime scene tape. She never, she never went to the crime scene. She was going to buy a bottle of liquor that, coincidentally, the person sent her a stock the bar party for buy a bottle of bullet bourbon. Mm -hmm. That was just completely out of the way, out of her route. Mm-hmm she was going to pick up. She wasn't driving to a crime scene. And I think she made that clear too. Nobody knew a murder was taking place. She literally drove to the crime scene and then drove all the way back to buy the liquor and then went to the restaurant. Like, this is so wild. She pulled up to the crime scene tape, Dr. Adelson. She didn't pull up to the crime scene tape. She was driving down the street and then had to make a U-turn and was blocked off. <laughs> but she wasn't going she to. She couldn't help herself. Nobody it? knew a murder was going to take place. She exposed you all to some degree by those actions, didn't she? No. Not at and all. then she threw you under the bus in her interview, didn't she? Yes. Th the, nobody knew a murder was going to take place. She knew her husband had just been shot, and they were asking her who would want him dead, and she said your name. Are you mad? If y'all haven't watched the interviews yet, watch the interviews that she did. Um, I uploaded three. Oh wait, did I upload the last one? Should be a three-part series on my YouTube channel. Watch the interview. Oh my goodness. About that? No, she said a lot of people's names. Well, she Not said yours in the first twenty-five pages of a five-hour interview. Isn't that true? Yep. I, I wasn't there for the interview. But you've reviewed it in preparation for your trial, haven't you? I actually don't know if I've seen her interview. No, I feel like they watched it religiously and they were probably like, what the fuck, Wendy? Because Wendy was like, oh, I mean, it could be my brother. You know, he offered to hire a hitman, you know, instead of getting me a TV or something like some bullshit like that. Oh, no, he, he offered me to, he offered to hire a hitman, but then he got me a TV instead. And then she brought up her family, her mom, her dad. Like, she kept trying to throw them under the bus, okay? There was a lot of questions of you about you know, didn't you do this murder with Wendy? Doesn't the state think you did this murder with Wendy? Have you, are you familiar with your charges in this case? Um, yes, I'm very familiar with my charges. Right. And, and who are you alleged to have done this murder with? Uh, I'm alleged to have done this murder with my sister, my mom, mm. and my dad. Would it refresh your recollection to review a copy of the indictment in this case? I'm a slow reader, but I can read it if you want. May I refresh your memory? Right. Hey, Yifro. Who's shielding? This is the official charging document in your case, Dr. Adelson. What does it say in reference to who you are alleged to have committed the murder with? This is, what day is this? 2022. Oh, they, th they think I did a murder with Katie. Catherine and I have Yes. Anybody else? Uh, give me a minute, I'll read. 
Uh, they got Luis Rivera in here. They got Sigfredo Garcia. As being alleged to have committed the murder with you? I read it too quick. Take your time. About July 18th, 2014, did unlawfully. Okay. Yeah, Katie. Catherine. Okay. Yeah, so weird how none of the Adelson family, the mom, the dad, aren't there to support. Are you mad that Wendy hasn't been charged and you have? No, I'm mad that I got charged for a crime that I didn't commit. Do you have any innate anger with Wendy over that fact? No, not at all. Are you pissed that she told all that stuff to Jeff Lacoste? <laughs> I don't think she said that to Jeff, but I wasn't there. How did Lacoste... <laughs> okay, we're at the halfway mark. Um, I'm going to come back to this. I do want to jump to this one right here. This one is... Oh, do I want to jump this one? 32 minutes? Oh, let me think. Yeah, let's watch, let's watch a little bit of this one. So this is Dan and Wendy's friend, and she does a police interrogation as well. Let's see what she has to say about the Adelson family. I, I, when they split up, I went down and met with Wendy and went out with Wendy and Charlie and his friends. It's, um, it's mind-blowing, but... The legal situation was getting to another point where it was blowing up. Oh my god. Well, my parents sounded really surprised, so it's at least a relief. I was trying to think of who would be angry enough to do something to him. Mm. My parents would be angry, but they're not capable of this. Thank god. I really couldn't handle that right now. Yeah, no. Is it involved one? No, 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 no. So let me uh, let me just talk to you later, and um, exactly. What is it? Is everyone's health okay? Yeah. All right. Does, does it involve me? Does it involve me or other people? Well, probably those people. Mm, so dumb. Why call him? Why not do this in person? What's that? Probably the two of us. So you probably have a general idea what I'm talking about. It, it, Ooh, this shady family. It was a, it was a big family to family. Um, but Danny talked to them about everything. Like he, they were like brother and sister to him while he was here. Okay. And he needed that kind of rock. He, he was a mess with what Wendy put him through. And I'll tell you that Maya, on some level, suspects that Wendy's family might be involved. Alex is really trying not to think that way. Does anyone know her name? They just referred to her as her friend. Um... Let me pull up Dan's messages. Let me see if there's the, the list of attorneys. That's what I wanted to go through. Because I remember Wendy... I, I remember Wendy did mention that... Tamara. I remember Wendy mentioning that she had a friend that was mutuals, and at some point she was disappointed that friend said it more with Dan Markell. I wonder if that's her or someone else. Um, he says, I hope you're not using Wendy's lawyer. So who does she have? Currently Christy Adamson. Kristen Adamson. Sorry. Kristen Adamson. I'll just let you see it. <laughs> oh, that's her name? Tamara Demko? Okay. This was her attorney. That's what she's talking about. Four was Shan Shannon Novi. Novi. These, this is Danny writing to me. Okay. Because I was in the process of trying to find an attorney, which I didn't end up using with um, right. my ex. Okay. But the 
the way that this went was every so often each of them would change lawyers. And what that would do was conflict out the attorney for the other person. Not sure how that works, but okay. You're the you're the law grad. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, if they've ever talked to you about your case, right. you can't represent the other person. Okay. So they went around to get consultations and, and had each person for a little while. If they didn't like how the attorney was handling it, they jumped to the attorney shop. And the other one couldn't use the one they just got Correct. through with. And there are only a certain number of family certified attorneys in town. This is the interrogation that everyone was telling me to watch. Um, she's a mutual friend of both Dan and uh, Wendy Adelson. But she dropped some details, I guess, about the Adelson family. Okay. It got ugly. I mean, it was a long list of, and he, he was actively filing motions to conflict out people she was selecting as of when we went to dinner on June 4th. So it sounds like you're both trying to eliminate all the possible attorneys that the other side can have. Correct. It was, it was, honestly, it was just ugly. Okay. Sounds like a shit show. And for a while it became ugly in a really, like a Cold War sort of way. And then in the last month and a half, it had started heating up again. And it's weird because according to Georgia, Georgia was saying that Wendy said that, oh, you know, right before Dan Markell's death, that she got along with Dan Markell. But people were like, mm, 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 mm. that wasn't the case. Nope. Originally, she had asked me, I did the guest lecture June 17th. Originally, she had sent me an email asking me to guest lecture on June 3rd, which was my birthday, so I remember it. Because she wanted me to guest lecture on the date she and Danny were supposed to go into court. And then that got moved. So they were going back and forth that whole time. Up until this past June? This was this June. Yeah, I know. I'm yeah. saying, what were they going to go to court for on June 3rd? They were going to court again for this. He was trying to raise those issues, those particular issues. Had he notified? Had he already filed this motion? Had he already? I don't know. Okay. I know that, that they were going to court, and then he wanted to adjust it to add certain things on okay. for conflict and for this um, failure to disclose okay. aspect. And she was notified of that? I assume so. I, and, and she, when she used to trust me and talk to me about her legal stuff, and then she felt like I was getting too close to Danny, she, you know, her parents were goading her on, like, you need to go to the mattresses, you need to... Look at this picture of Charlie. Hold on, I gotta use the bathroom real quick. <laughs> And they wanted I'm gonna leave you guys to with this picture, Charlie. Okay, have fun. And really stick it to him. They there was a, a mentality when she would talk to me, and when I was in present with them when they would talk, that he owed her. Okay. And he owed her big time, which they weren't married a whole lot of years, but there was this he owes you. That was. And I don't know whether it was because she had told them she felt she had been abused or what, but that was incredibly present. And the people that she talked to on Team Wendy had heard stories that Danny was very upset about, and he spent time trying to change that. So it got personal, it got professional, it was unpleasant. Did, did, did Danny ever concede that he owed her more money? No. No, he, he felt like he owed her less money. I mean, he, he would do anything for the boys. He would give everything for the boys. But in terms of her taking something that she was owed, he was not. No, I know, but I, I'd heard something before about... Um, Incredibly present, and the people that she talked to, she felt that was, and I don't know whether it was because she had told them she felt she had been abused or what, but that was incredibly present. And the people that she talked to on Team Wendy had heard stories that Danny was very upset about, 
and he spent time trying to oh hello hi <laughs> change that so it got personal it got professional it was unpleasant did, did, did Danny ever concede that he owed her more money? No. No, he, he felt like he owed her less money. I mean, he, he would do anything for the boys. He would give everything for the boys. But in terms of her taking something that she was owed, he was not. No, I know, but I, I'd heard something before about um, that there was some contention in this divorce that he had not paid for everything. Oh, yeah, I remember when she was interviewing, she said, like, he owed her a lot of money. But we don't know if that's even true. Hello, Benjamin. How's it going? And uh, that was the case, I think, earlier on, to my knowledge. Um, I don't know if it was equity of the house or... Yeah, they, were, they disagreed on, on the house. Yeah, that sounds right. They disagreed on that. They disagreed on the jewelry, the, the heirloom, and then... And going through this process, it was the concealment of the half a million dollars in assets. And I didn't understand the details of what that entailed, if that was like inheritance money. I think she thought it was inheritance money that he wasn't entitled to. But it was like, it was a back and forth of, you just didn't do this, you didn't disclose that, you should have done this. And, and it was, she felt trapped. I know she felt trapped here. And I knew that he, especially now dating someone in New York was like he wanted he wanted things to move on I mean he went even before he started dating Amy when he was talking to what's up with this like random ass slideshow that's happening right here no she's the friend of the victim and then she's also friend of the woman whose family murdered the victim he wanted to move on uh you know Tal Tallahassee I think a lot of Tallahassee this is my home but yeah. I know a lot of people are 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 of the opinion well, Tallahassee's not Miami, it's not Orlando, it's definitely not New York, it's not Boston. So, a guy, I mean, I just wondered, I never quite understood why they landed here, from okay. everything I've heard. So, he, um, he wanted to be a full-time professor, and he had some friends here who lived here before me, and had talked to them as well. And so FSU became the option. And they had lived in DC together before they came down here. And seemed to have a nice romance, seemed like a nice couple. And they moved here and she was miserable here. They moved here and she was miserable here, even before the wedding. Mm, and she tried telling, I think, was it the court? I think when she was testifying, she said that like, oh, she didn't hate FSU or fuck. Or no, sorry, Jeff Lacoste. Oh, I'm trying to remember. Sorry, because there's like this is like over time spent like ten years, but I think she was trying to say that like, oh no, I like FSU or like I like the Tallahassee area. Like, oh yeah, but then like Jeff is like, no, you fucking hated it. Like, why are you trying to say that you liked it? Oh, it was like after Dan Markell's murder, she was trying to say that she liked Tallahassee, and then Jeff's like, no, you don't. You fucking hate it here. And she, he, he wanted to set up roots. He wanted to have a kind of a. He's Canadian of all things, but he wanted like a, a Burby family go to, to shul and he could establish himself and this provided enough of a small town feel that he's like i'm gonna throw myself into it and he was happy to do that he wanted the house he, when they got the house together you know he wanted to, to do it all up and he was excited about that and she went along but i knew she wasn't excited about it well why tallahassee as opposed to someplace down in south florida where she's from that's not a place where he could get a professorship oh. immediately okay it's, it's it's bigger competition okay and I don't think he was as keen on Miami. In fact, after she left him, he's like, I'll even move down to Miami with you, kind of thing. She went But um, I was too late at that point. But he didn't want to go down to Miami. She always felt they would end up in Miami. They, I think they lived in Miami. Yeah, they did. They lived in Miami for, while she was finishing, she lived in Miami while she was finishing school for a year. Um, so they were down in Miami for a little bit together. I actually went and visited them in Miami. Oh, they were married? Sorry, this footage is like stuttery or something. I don't even think they were married yet. Um, I'm not sure. It was either just before or shortly after they got married that they were down in Miami. When I was still married and I lived in Brandon, they came when they were engaged and stayed at my house um, for a couple of nights. So her life was South Florida. She grew up there. 
wanted to be back there, especially when the kids came. She wanted to be close to her parents. It was a little overwhelming for her, especially with two boys. Um, and he was, hey, we're here, and let's get in, let's go in the community and really become a part of it. And and so he was trying to help her get a teaching position at FSU. And so she oh, this is her with like the teal boosting contacts. Started as an adjunct, and she was teaching the medical legal clinical. Um, Marshall Cap, she was was the person she reported to. He was at the service today. And she started bringing me in the guest lecture, and I've done it every semester for the last three years, including her summers. So I, I always have touched base with her, but it's, you know, it's once a semester, once every three or four months, and Danny, it's, you know, at least every month, I'm hanging out with him at some point. Okay. All right. I wonder if Wendy's so extremely manipulative that she began to believe her own lies, possibly. So basically, from our conversation, um, you don't feel good about her dad. Right. Anybody else in the family besides him? I haven't seen Charlie in a really long time. She says, I don't feel good about her dad. But I know that she was relying heavily on Charlie. And if she was telling anyone about what happened or what she felt happened, it would have been Charlie. Okay. And that he was very protective of her. Um, Danny felt like he was okay with Charlie at the beginning. And then over time, he felt like he wasn't anymore. And I think the same thing. He felt like he was fine with her parents, and then all of a sudden, they flipped on him. He was very confused about it. And I think over time, when he was hearing some of the things that she had passed along to colleagues, who then started looking at him funny, she, he realized that his, her family members may be thinking the same things. And I don't know exactly what she was telling them, but he was painted as not a nice person. So it, it became very he said, she said. Now, I do believe they both love those children to death. But I honestly, I've never seen a father so devoted. And she, she became very happy to travel. And she'd be gone for just periods at a time and leave the boys. I don't know who she left them with, if her parents came up or what, but she would just leave. And it really bothered him too because when she did that sometimes he wouldn't get the boys or it was like a day off and so she's like oh well they'll just stay with this person this time and so there were little takes where she kept trying to cut into his time schedule um but they had a little bit of a groove for a while where it seemed like it was going okay and then just in the last few months it, it has felt like a renewed flurry of legal activity and she seemed happy and excited about the social worker boyfriend. And Dan thought maybe she would calm down and be happy and start her own path and... Nope. Who he had recently this? gone to visit her. So after we went to dinner, he was leaving to go visit her. And he, they, they had this pattern where they switch off every couple of weeks. Um, mostly she, he would fly up because she had some flying issues and was a little bit timid about flying. So he would go up, um, and she was scheduled to come down and meet the boys in person for the first time, which recently just happened. So he was all excited about that, and she had started Skyping with the boys. My understanding was that Wendy had found out that she was Skyping with the boys and was furious about it, and this is very recently. I didn't know that. So Amy had started coming more into the boys' lives, and I don't think she was, handl was handling it well from what I've heard. Um, Oh, Amy is the woman that Dan Markell was seeing, and she was, like, a professor, I think, in, like, New York. I think that was, like, what they were trying to do. They were trying to picture of her, but it was, like, cut off for some reason. No, I, I don't... She was know. Skyping from here. Danny was having the boys on Skype here while he had them. I don't know. I think he might have tried to put her on while he was with her. Oh. While the boys were with Wendy. That's my understanding. Oh, okay. Which upset her. Okay which would make more sense if she were present. Um, when I walked into Wendy's yesterday, and I'm assessing the situation, and Janine was there, and they were trying to, they like went into a private conversation, and I'm sitting down, and they're like, well, da 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 does, you know, does Amy, you know, we have to tell, talk to Amy, and da da, -da. And I said, I talked to Amy. And I said, does she know? They said, yeah, she knows. And they're like, no, not what happened. Does she know? as if, does she know where the investigators are looking, was the implication. And I said, what do you mean? And the next question was, Wendy redirected and she said, has she talked to her husband? 
And so she started down this path. Oh, and this is what Wendy's been doing the entire time with the police interrogation, where she's just trying to drop this information so it gets into other people's minds. They're like, oh, maybe it was Amy. Maybe it was Amy's ex-husband. Maybe he wasn't happy with Dan Markell. This is her just, like, dropping her little, like, shit everywhere. ...there of making me wonder or making or wanting to make me wonder if Amy's husband was involved. It didn't, I still didn't feel led that way, even with that discussion change. But that was the path. Wendy is, is good at keeping things close to the vest and redirecting. And for example, she never pretty close while she was writing that book. She didn't tell me she was writing the book at all. And then when she finally told me, she gave me a copy, and I was like, Oh, you know, author lives in Tallahassee with her two sons. Hmm. Now, was this a book about a single woman raising two children? Yeah. Um, this is our story. It was about, it was a fictionalized version of human trafficking based on her clinical work. Okay. And Except here, the person has bright blue eyes. We know that Wendy has like, what does she have? Like, what, She has bright blue eyes, right? Wendy does? Yeah, she has blue eyes, but then she wears like these like stupid teal contacts and makes them like teal or some shit. Oh my God. <laughs> Wendy literally writing a book about herself. And it's apparently hit. It was selected at FSU to be their, it was like their one book or something campus. So everyone who joined, every new freshman gets a copy of her book. I was told that up at UNC or up at Duke, there's a copy of her book in the law library up at Duke. She's got, she, she was one of the few people that she self-published. And then after she self-published, because she was so good at publicizing it, people came back and wanted to formally publish it for her which is rare. And Dan was all like supportive about everything and all this kind of stuff. And it's still, honestly, when I, when I looked at that, I'm like, it was one of the things I noted, but I put in, in the back of my mind. Hey queen, how are you doing today? I thought she had blue eyes, but then she wears those like teal to like enhance it, to make it like really like artificial looking or something. Hello CMB. With every other little weird thing. No, she wasn't trafficked, but uh, people were saying that it's a book about a woman who works as a lawyer. She works as an attorney or something. She's like very unhappy in her marriage. She lives in this fictional place. It sounds like Tallahassee, but it's like something else. But it sounds very similar to Tallahassee. Um, and it just sounds like she was just sort of writing about herself, how she's like very unhappy in this marriage, unhappy in Tallahassee. And then she makes this huge change and then blah, 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 blah. And then when she left him, I was like, oh, she knew this was coming. But she, she, when she finished it, it was like a whole year before she left him. Okay, I don't know why we're watching this. Or some other, did someone handle it? Um, it's kind of, yeah, for him. I'm sure if you have to, uh, I'm sorry, this is about the bump. Like, if I had been still married to him, then there wouldn't be anyone that was angry, right? Like, there wouldn't be any kind of disgruntled, wouldn't be Amy's husband. This can't be a random act of violence. This has to be on purpose. Someone did this for a reason. But this is why I tell everybody, you don't cause people's actions. You can control your actions. You can't control anyone else's. Ugh. And I know it's hard. And, you know, as you and I kind of talk throughout this process, you know, when time comes, I'll make recommendations for things that might be good for you and for the boys. But right now, let's just kind of deal with tonight. Yeah. We'll get there. Okay, here it goes. This is... This is the worst day of my life. Oh my God, the performance. This is where she calls Donna to tell Donna what happened. It's so cringe. And I'm going to make you guys listen to it again. <laughs> it's so cringe. Maybe I should text them if I can't. Hi, Mom. How's it going? Mom, I need you to sit down. I am fine. The boys are fine. Um, I need you to sit down. I'm I'm fine, and the boys are and the boys. And if I remember correctly, um, she was crying like the very beginning of the interview and like throughout. But then when she calls the mom to deliver this news, I don't remember hearing her voice break and start crying. Because I feel like just talking about it again, even if you're delivering information to someone else, like you would just start breaking down. Like it would just get so emotional. You're fine. Danny has been. Dan, you can put me on speaker. Yeah. Um, Danny has been shot. Um, and I don't think he's going to make it. 
Um, and so, I know, I know. Um, so I found this out around one or two today and I'm at the police station and I'm trying to help them figure out who may have done this. Um, the boys, the boys are, the boys are fine. I had Lynn and Alan pick them up from school and they're with Lynn and Alan right now. Um, and I'm gonna leave here soon and go be with them. Um, but I really need you to come here and be with me. But I want you to either fly if you spend- I mean, She forgot to cry. <laughs> Wendy, you forgot to cry. <laughs> Obviously you can't leave right now, but I need you to get yourself together. If it's too much to drive, I'd really rather that you flew up. I'm at the police station and I'm going to leave soon and be with the boys before they go to bed. They're with Alan and Lynn and they're totally fine. Um, yeah, the boys are fine, but they don't know anything yet. Um, and um, I, in his house, I know, um, I know. So I, I just need you to calm down before you get in the car. Okay. Okay. So, um, and it's, you know, it's evening. So if you want to come here tomorrow, I have, a lot of people that'll you know be here with me and you know we'll have a lot of support so okay. this sounds like some scripted ass bullshit that she fucking got from a movie script or something like that like i don't know she's just like hitting all the talking points but like the hot talking points that she's hitting it's like it's not coming from someone who just like is related to a victim and is generally upset it's as if she's just like a third party delivering a message to someone like a victim's family or something i want you to take your time and just be safe in getting here but i'd like you to come when you can okay Yep, when they're done with Donna, listen, when they're done with Donna, maybe they'll go after Wendy too. Because I think so, there's a lot of fishy things happening over here. Okay, all right. I love you. Um, um, I, I have, I think Jane might, I have the car here, but Jane might take me. I'm not going to be alone. So I have, um, I have a lot of support and I'll be fine. Um, but um, yeah, if you could just come here, that would be great. Yeah, and it's just so shitty that she has custody of the kids, that Dan Markell's family barely got to see the kids, were, was cut off for like six years. And they're the ones that are responsible for all this. He's, he's in the ICU in the hospital. Okay, but be careful, okay? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who edits? Okay, this? love you too. What's Bye. with the edits? Mom, mom. Oh. <laughs> you did awesome with that call. Yeah. Thank you. you were so stressed out about it and you handled it. Um, I just want you I talked to Alan. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just because my, my suggestion to him, just because we Wait, that's it? Um Ducky. Wait, that's it? That's the only thing that we get? Okay. Um I don't know if we really got anything from this interrogation. That was I mean it was interesting, but I don't know. So I, didn't really, I didn't really get anything. Okay. Um, I'm mom, 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 mom. Let's see. Do you guys want to continue listening to? Well, let me think. Let's do this in a different stream. We'll do part one and then part two. Hi, cat dish. Hubris came in my mind, but I felt like it wasn't strong enough to like what I wanted to say. I think cocky. I like the word. I like the word cocky. Yeah, I think cocky was what I was looking for. But thanks, cat dish. <laughs> The glitch looks like some little messages. I keep trying to pause in the right mode to see the devil. Did you see the devil? What did it look like? Was it Charlie in the yellow hoodie with the hair? <laughs> All right, y'all. Okay, so we are gonna finish part two of the Charlie stuff, um, and then there is like some other. Oh wait, can I wait before I go? Can I show you guys this? Oh my god, it's so stressful. Oh, it's so stressful. Let me find it really quick. Oh man, there is this um body cam footage that I watch. It's very short, too. Um, do I go to my history? Do I go to my history? I have to show you guys this video. History. Did I put it on my watch later list? Body cam, body cam. Oh, there's Donna. Crash. Oh, wait, no, the fence people are here. Shit, no, I have to end my stream, sorry. No, 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 I don't have it. Wait, there's a Madeline Soto footage? Is there? I have people that are, I have people here welding my fence right now. That's why I have to end my stream. Oh, sorry, they, I just, I, heard, I hear them right now. They just started, okay.
Uh, let me find this body cam video. Oh, wait, I found it. Wait, why is this two, three hours long? Okay. The one that I found was like eight minutes long. Um, I'll show you guys this next time. I have people here. My Dennis ran over a fence and they have to come back and fix it and weld it. So that's what they're doing right now. It might be really loud. So I'll be back. We'll stream the rest of this. And I want to show you guys this fucking body cam footage. It's like, ah! I don't know. It's so crazy. It's wild to me. But um, I haven't heard anything about the Madeline Soto footage, but that case bothers me a lot. There's just so much about it that I'm just like, I don't know. It's so sad. I went to get um, the autopsy reports. I wish we didn't have to wait until September for Donald Trump. I'm definitely waiting on Wendy's arrest at some point. <laughs> Always a pleasure. But guys, if you're on Twitch, um, I'm going to stream on Twitch. So I think we're going to do some video games because, you know. It's okay to have background noise when you're playing video games. But for YouTube, guys, thank you so much for hanging out. I'm going to end my stream here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, I appreciate y'all just chatting it up and uh, having me in the background, you know, lurking as well. I do appreciate all this. We're going to watch part two of Charlie's Adelson's cross-examination um, and a bunch of other stuff that I want to watch with you guys. So thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you guys have a good one. Take care. We've been adding videos on TikTok um, and on YouTube as well. They're like short formats and then... Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Oh, is ne Neko? Hi. Hi, Neko. I'm totally not ending my stream right now. <laughs> All right, y'all. I hope you guys have a good one. Take care. And my stream is going to end on Twitch, but I'll probably start it back up in a little bit. All right. I hope you guys have a good one. Take care. And I will see you guys. I'll see you guys soon. Um, I might do another YouTube stream, I think, this week. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Yes. I miss you guys from all the trial stuff. We saw each other, like, what, like, every day for the past two weeks? Now it's like, oh, we're back to like the once or twice a week stream. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a good one. Take care.